is going on everybody it is bush fishing and we are back today with another video in today's video we're going to be showing you guys how to test injectors at home with a little tool like this and how it can save you a whole lot of money i will start this video by saying testing it with something like this at home will never be as good as actually having them sent out having them flow tested and you can definitely do that at home but in this video it's going to be kind of the quick easy way to see one if your injectors are leaking two if your injectors are spraying properly or if there's a blockage and three just kind of how to clean them and how the actual injector works this kit i will have a link down below in the description it costs 28 dollars and essentially you get this module which you hook it up to a 12 volt source with these two clamps here and you have these leads so you can test two injectors at once and all it does is it actually will pulse the injector for you so this has a whole bunch of different modes you can do things like 50 pulses seven milliseconds apart stuff like that or you can do single pulse only when you hit it but the best part about this kit is that it comes with these adapters so these adapters all they do is they have a little hole in them right down there there's a little hole and they have two different sizes so your injector will go into there and you will use an aerosol can of something like brake clean and you sit this right over the top and when you push down on it it'll pressurize this tube with whatever you're using so in this video i'm going to be using brake clean it'll pressurize it and the injector o-ring will seal it so you'll have pressure on the back of the injector as soon as you hit the pulse button it'll start pulsing and you'll see your injector spray pattern and before you hit pulse you'll see if the injector is leaking at all if you for whatever reason think that you have some debris in the fuel line or up in the rail or you think your fuel was dirty and your fuel filter failed or something this is an excellent way to clean these and verify that they're all spraying properly alrighty now that everything's properly set up I got the heat going in here finally. Super nice, let's get you familiar with the fuel rail. When you're looking at the motor, it's gonna look like this. You won't be able to see these injectors very well, but when you pull it out, you have your feed line. So this, you will most likely not have it disconnected when you first get it out. You'll have it connected up here, and I believe I pulled this off of the fuel filter. So I have this tag in line because I didn't have the uh, fuel fitting tool to pull it off of here. Regardless, it does the same thing here. Depending on the application, this came off a marine application. So we have our main fuel feed line and this is the fuel pressure sensor. A lot of them don't have this if you're working on an older boat or if you're in automotive, it will be in a different place. Your pressurized fuel, which is already pressurized and regulated via the pump. The regulator is built into the pump on this application. Most automotive applications, it will be regulated in the pump. On some of the older Malibus, stuff like that, you have a separate pressure regulator and the Merck stuff, you have a separate pressure regulator, but that's not really all that important. An important thing to say is if you're having fuel pressure issues, I would start with your fuel pump and pressure regulator rather than at the fuel injectors. Fuel injectors are pretty much the last thing. If you're having a misfire and you go through, am I sparking out the plug? Am I sparking out the cap and rotor, coil, whatever it is? If you've gone through all that, it's sparking everywhere. I have good compression and timing's right. That's when I would move into testing the fuel injector. You can test it with a Noid light, which essentially plugs into the harness that the injector gets plugged into and it just tells you if the computer is telling it for the pulse if it's sending the voltage that way if it is that's when i would get to this point or if you're just kind of doing this as a maintenance thing that's also when i would do this on a v8 like this you have your two fuel rails one on either side this is a chevy motor so you're going to have these into the lower intake manifold kind of valley cover if you haven't watched my previous video on tearing down this motor it would be a good thing if you really have no clue how to get these out because i tell you the location of these bolts and you kind of see what you have to get out but two bolts on either side is your hold down for once they're fully seated pop those out pop these directly up these injectors have clips on them the clips hold the injector into the rail so using a pick like this which is really dirty i'm going to go on the back side of that clip it's got three sides to it and i'm just going to pop it out attempting not to bend it this is what that clip looks like three-sided and it holds the injector up into the rail once you have that removed you can twist and pull these have a lot of grease in them from when they're installed but i am going to make a point here in a second of something to look for but just like that this is your fuel injector so looking at the fuel injector this is o-ringed on both sides that green stuff is grease when installing these it's really important to either use oil or grease some type of lubricant because you do not want to break these injectors on the way in now i'm going to pop another one off and i'm going to show you what happens if you don't lube them and this o-ring gets caught on something Alrighty, i'm kind of all over the place so i apologize for that but i think what i was getting into is once you get all your injectors out the first thing you want to really do is inspect the o-rings so these are o-ringed on both sides 
cards and I have two here on the starboard bank which is bank two on this because it's a direct drive it's facing the normal way and this is my troubled side now before I even test them I'm looking at the o-ring and hopefully you guys can see this the o-rings cut so from installation, if this thing got pushed up on something, that little piece of missing O-ring could cause this to either, you'd most likely see it leak externally because there's gonna be a lot of pressure there, but more likely than not, since it's on the spraying side, not the feed side, it could have been causing it to leak a little bit of air in there. And that little bit of air would cause it to think it's running lean, which would make the computer add a bunch of fuel to that bank, giving us our rich code. I believe that makes sense. Anyway, here's another one, same bank. This one's not nearly as bad bad but also on the spray side hopefully you can see that on the spray side it's got a flat spot this one isn't missing a chunk but it's got a flat spot like it was put in on an angle and tightened down so that's something to look out for if you have busted o-rings on that bottom side that could be part of your issue when you hook your injector tester up to power it's going to look like this so we've got these two leads going onto the battery just powering it up you can click on mode so one is short two medium three long continuous five six there's a whole bunch of different modes that you'll read in the manual i'm gonna do short and when you hit the pulse it'll start pulsing and go through what it needs to go through i'm going to take my two leads down here if you have four you can do two injectors at once but i'm going to take these two leads and i'm just going to pick an injector off bank two and after fighting with it for a little bit you'll get your two leads in there so i'm going to click on pulse on mode one. Oh, sorry i'm going to switch it to mode two so it goes for medium length But you can hear the injector opening and closing. Now with our adapter that I showed you earlier, picking the right side and going on the feed side of the injector, we're going to shove it in there with the o-ring on, which is going to seal it. Now I'm going to have to push you guys off. So I'm going to set you guys back here. For me, I'm going to be using non-flammable just because I do have uh, open flame right next to me. Don't want to use the flammable stuff. So you're going to pop your little spray cap off. And the first test we're going to do by taking the little end on this, and we're gonna shove it up the spray hole. So when I push down on it. So mode eight will go until I shut it off. Let's try this again in a way that you guys hopefully will be able to see. So hopefully you can see that. It was spraying out pretty good. I don't think I fully pressurized it. You get the gist of it. The injector is getting cleaned and is working. I'm actually gonna try one of these different sizes to see if I can get that to stay on a little better. So you guys can see how that one worked. That one worked a little better. Still, you do make a mess. And now essentially all you do is go through all your injectors and test for that. The better you hold it in, the better you'll be able to see if one of them is leaking. Obviously in this scenario with these cut O-rings, I'm thinking that's going to be my issue, but nevertheless, we still go through all of them to make sure. So same thing on this one. Turn the pulse on and hang on for dear life. And that's all you really got to do. Obviously, if you have a little more room and some better grip, you can do a better job on it. This isn't really the most trusted diagnostic way of figuring out which injector is bad, but if you had a plugged injector or if the electrical portion wasn't working and the solenoid wasn't working, you would 100% be able to tell. Even just by listening to it, you'd be able to tell. So this is going to be a short video. I'm just going to run through the rest of these injectors. If anything, I'm cleaning them, but most likely for this motor behind me, it's going to be getting all new O-rings. These injectors are most likely going to get put back in but we're still going to run through them and test them out if you guys want to see any more of this motor build behind me make sure to subscribe and watch the surrounding videos on this you see what's really wrong with this and kind of how to tear down and put back together an entire inboard which this motor platform is the same on stern drives and a whole bunch of other things and probably your truck so if that's anything that excites you subscribe make sure to leave a like if this helped you in any way and if you guys want any st marine or bush fishing merch first link down in the description i got the car hard on today because i'm getting all nasty with this stuff but that's all i got so hopefully this video helped you guys and uh if you guys want to get this kit first link down in the description below on amazon super cheap and super useful we will see you guys in the next video which will be putting this thing back together see ya